Welcome back to the desk, everyone. Now, London versus Boston next. But before that, some of you might remember that Kirif had some fighting words. Let's hear them. But we win at the play, so play off will be the same. You know? I mean, I think it's not gonna be easy, but I can make it easy, so. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Okay, I hear you, Karim. Right. Okay. Talk your talk, all right? But now they gotta walk the walk. Can they do it? Of course, London Spitfire, they unfortunately took a, a difficult L against the Boston Uprising. We did think that after that one, no shot they can run with that rank carb and actually even make it out of the plans. But they did. I think they adapted while they stuck to the Ryan. They did make some changes in their approach to the team fights and the maps and their opponents. I mean, someone who didn't get Roll Star is Smurf from Tang. And, and like, he deserves it. He's one of the most versatile tanks we have in the game. So you can bring out these Orisa compositions if you want to. We've seen them match Reinhardt earlier in the year if they have to. Smurf, of course, an incredible Winston player as well. And the Boston Uprising, they could totally match the Atlanta Reign and the Hunter Spark if they want to play Winston compositions. If they're facing a lone of Spitfire that is leaning on this Reinhardt composition, there's no doubt that Boston Uprising will have an answer. So Boston Uprising, really versatile team, filled with, packed with just experience, like playoff experience, championship experience. They should have no issue dealing with the lone of Spitfire. You know, I do think the London Spitfire are the underdogs in this match, right? You've got to see, oh, Boston just beat them in the last matchup, but I think London are a team you will never count out until the very bitter end. I think they can make anything happen with their unique style because it's not just Hottie. Everyone thinks about the Reinhardt. He's like the face of this composition, but the fact is this team is stacked top to bottom with players extremely comfortable in their roles. We could start talking about the DPS. I think Backbone's May has been lights out this season, a crucial element to be able to bring into the Rhine comp and enable him to catch people. Sparker on the these days it's been the Bastion, but any hit scan you put this guy on, he is deadly. He uses that Rhine shield to maximum effect. And the support line as well has a ton of flexibility to fill that out. Notably, it's going to be Landon on the Vap, Admiral on the Lucio. They're across the board specialists in this comp. It is not just the Ryan. It is every single player who knows exactly what to do, how to play these unique situations. And for a team as good as Boston, it's like, yes, they can win. But what they had to do last time to take down London was heroic. I mean, it was incredible efforts killing Admiral time and time again. That is not easy to repeat, it's not consistent. Boston has to play out of their mind to, to replicate that kind of performance again. I think I think individually, Boston sure has the better players, but London's biggest strength is their teamwork, right? It's using the same uh, five players and also just running with the same comp and they're comfortable with it, and they got that teamwork down, like, to the ground. And I think we have to keep in mind here that if we go back and rewatch that match against Boston, it wasn't like the compositional difference. I think it was a, a big bunch of individual mistakes from London Spitfire, which was very uncharacteristic of them. The backline really struggled. Boston abused that fact and got a convincing victory. But the London Spitfire we saw after that match, they cleaned up, right? They, they really earned a spot to get here into the playoffs. So we'll see if they can actually come out on top. Let's take a look at our predictions. As much as my heart wants to root for the London Spitfire, I had to go with the Boston Uprising. I am so sorry, but the Boston Uprising, they're just so star-studded. Like, you cannot vote against those players. You be It would be almost disingenuous to do so. But if one person would be doing that, it would be you oh, with your bread. Danny. 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 Come on, just show it up. Everyone knows I'm going, I'm going for go. London Spitfire. 3-2, go. baby. Zoe, Let I gotta go say, there. you haven't learned your lesson. What happened in the play-ins, huh? Who beat Vancouver? Yeah, but who, who, beat, beat, who beat London? <laughs> who beat Toronto? Hey, no. Your points did no, not work no, out No, 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 that was way thought. before. They oh, learned their lesson. They're here to redeem themselves okay, against so Boston Uprising. Okay, so only week two of play-ins, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Got it, got it. <laughs> Let's go, London, all the way. The vibes competition is extremely tight over on this side of the desk. Yep. I think to, to take a more analytical approach, I just see this this match as a litmus test <laughs> for this Arisa Genji comp, right? This is what Boston showed as the first answer to London style. They, it, they look great for them. They won that match pretty handily. Other teams tried to replicate it and failed against London. So the question is, is it that one match? Was it an overperformance? Huge plays from Decay, Smurf, Lee Jae Gon? 
is that something they can consistently replicate against London? Or does London have the, the skill to innovate, not necessarily in their picks, but in their play style, their approach, their their ult management? These are the ways they can... All right, so what's, what's your point? <laughs> Where are you going with? So I'm going Boston Uprising. Uh, I, like the, uh, I like their comp. I like that matchup. I think it's going to favor them. Are we and not pandering to the crowd here? Johnny? 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 Crowd, crowd me and you. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Are you guys yes. serious? A traitor. I, I'm taking an analytical approach. They beat them last time. It's the Boston Uprising. Boot! I'm getting booed! Give right. me more booze! Give him, give him aye, more booze! That's aye, it! Go! Aye. The crowd supports these guys. I know. guys. These guys are jokes. Usually, are you guys serious? Usually I would say you, you got you got a size advantage, but there's a lot of them. I there's don't a lot of them. <laughs> you might want to stay up here on the desk for a little bit. But what if we're right? Well, at well, least we'll one person's going to be out. right. Someone will be right. <laughs> That's for sure. No matter what, we're here for this match. We hope for an exciting rematch. This is match number three of the day. Let's see where our audience is. Honestly, this is very close. Okay. There's a lot, of, a lot of London believers out there, and rightfully so. They did impress during the play-ins. Now we are ready for this match. For first things first, let's send it down to the floor with GB. Hey everyone, get ready for this next matchup. It's been quite the day so far. The crowd's starting to fill up even more so. It's gonna be awesome, but real quick, real quick. Guys, if you don't mind doing me a favor, because as a New Yorker, Johnny picked Boston, so I just wanna do something real fast. Can you guys just boo Johnny real fast for me? And also, get out of here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just wanted to get that done. Uh, in any case though, guys, who is ready for this matchup? All right. So do we think that the Boston Uprising pull up a win? Okay, okay, okay. What about, I don't know, the London Spitfire? That's a lot, a lot of noise, a lot of noise. I think the crowd is ready to go. We're ready to go. So let's go ahead and send it over to your casters as we get ready for this next match. <laughs> Thank you very much, Golden Boy. It's Jules and Custer bringing you through this next game. Boston Uprising versus the London Spitfire. Getting a little heated on the desk already. I love to see it. Of course, the analytical approach coming from Jake. No one is surprised, but somehow we end up booing Johnny, as is tradition. But honestly, the London Spitfire, they've been a fan favorite for the last two years because they're just fun to watch. They play Reinhardt. The power of friendship has come in clutch in the past. Can it come in clutch in these playoffs? Well, different meta. We've seen a ton already. Will we see Ryan? Of course we will, but of course. first, Please welcome to the stage the legendary Boston Uprising. A legendary lineup of players. People that have come out of retirement to stand on the playoff stage. We have Smurf. He's won it before Scott. He could win it again. So many legends. Just the sheer number of MVP, Roll Stars, championships on this roster is unparalleled in the league. When Pre built this roster, he said, we're building a championship roster. They've been a little shaky at times at the top end. Can they elevate to that level they need to be? Well, the London Spitfire, I think they're going to have something to say about it. Please welcome to the stage, the Ryan Connoisseurs, the London Spitfire. A team that is very much a crowd favorite, like you said, Scott. That main man in the middle right there, Hardy. A truly meta-defying team. They know what they love. They know how to play it to a T. That Ryan Rush style, we've seen variants of it throughout the year, Scott. A lot of Sim and Bastion recently. Yeah, they've moved it and changed it to the strength that they needed to be in the current meta. Bastion really taking a stand up in this meta, led by Spark. He's number one in damage with Bastion so far this season. And then the person next to him, Backbone, he plays the Mei when they need it, but the Symmetra play is what defined how strong their Reinhardt composition is. They are very much like some neural link. They're all on the same page. Those teleports are just, just sublime. And it's funny seeing other teams trying to replicate that kind of style using the Sim TPs. Yeah. And the TPs instantly get destroyed, or the half the team's late, they're like over there, half the team's over there. But with the London Spitfire, they're taking the TP, they're going as five, they're right on top of your backline, and Sparker is in turret form, mowing them down. And it's unconventional, and that's why every team in the playoffs is scared of the London Spitfire, because 
You know they can upset anyone at any time. It's so difficult to practice and prepare for. So if you're any team, then you have to be worried about playing this Reinhardt at any moment. But the bots in Uprising are in a unique situation because they beat them just two weeks ago in the play-ins to punch their ticket here. So the question is, have the bots in Uprising solidified their strategy. Can they do it once again and beat down the Reinhardt of Hattie and the team? Well, I think it's crazy too. We're seeing Smurf has obviously start, and we spoke a lot about going into the playoffs. Zarya, is she going to be perma meta? Is she going to be pushed out by other things like Doomfist? We're healing lots of things in the wind. Maybe a little bit of Winston here and there. We're seeing Smurf start. We're going to control, of course, Scott. So we're thinking maybe some Winston from Smurf. We thought that Zarya would be very prominent, so we were asking the question, how does the Zarya match up against the Reinhardt? But as you said, we've seen so many other teams playing different things. And this is London Spitfire's map pick as well. And of course, we're going to do a Rhine-favored map in Lijiang Tower. Not exactly where Boston want to go, of course. That's, that was the big thing. When the Soul Infernal sent the Spitfire to the other bracket, when they were like, we don't want to deal with this noise, that gave Spitfire the higher pick, which on control, Li Zhang Tao is so good for Reinhardt compared to other maps like Ilios. So that's a big advantage that Spitfire have. Worth noting, in the match that Boston Uprising and London Spitfire played two weeks ago, the one map that the London Spitfire won was on control. And if they're on Li Zhang Tower, they need to win this one. Start strong. Start strong. Those nerves on stage, you can't kick it in. But if you end up winning the first map, crowd's already behind you, London. You know how to win from there. The boss not rising in the London Spitfire, their first game of the playoffs. We're about to get in. 15 seconds before the doors unlocked. And the Spitfire, they know they're on this spot. Boss not rising, gotta know it too. Last time the Boston Uprising beat the London Spitfire, they played the Orissa, the Lucio, the Baptiste, alongside the Bastion. They also played some other things, primarily the Genji from Decay. It looks like they're just going to go two weeks back and try it again. Here we go. Rolling out. Mid-fight, Hardy almost booped off the edge there by Smurf's spear. Hardy going pretty low though. Baptiste did receive a, a sizable nerf. All right, down. On, but uh, I'll hold my point, Hardy already dead. He's just gone, almost booped off the map there. It looks like a little bit of an int there from Admiral just trying to get that reset, but the first fight won by Boston. Hadi trying to step up, took way too much damage, and that was the go button for the Uprising. Just put the pressure on, and Hardy falls. Terrible start here for the Spitfire. Now they need to find a way to route back to the point. All right, point unlocked, and point capped for the Boston Uprising. Is this just a better comp, Scott? Is the Orisa that good into the right? Last time it was competitive. It was back and forth. It could have gone for the London Spitfire. I don't think the Boston Uprising just have a better meta or a better composition in this matchup. Oh, there's a teleport. Whoa, Bird Ring didn't really know where to look there. Hardy holding up with the shield. That turret form ripping through that, but it looks like Boston Uprising on the defense. Not until they put up that window, but uh, it's a lamp from Landon to save his life and Hardy's. They're going to wait for the window to disappear before they make their next move. Landon has to be careful. Here comes the Orisa. A window from Sparker, Ready. but Lee Jagon takes him down. It is a trade of Bastions, but Landon's already dead. A good pin from Hardy. Is it going to secure the kill onto Smurf? And there is the Spitfire cleaning them up. But Lee Jagon is still alive. It's actually double support versus Hardy on the Rhine and Admiral on the Lucio. Can they get the flip? Looks like Lee Jigon is going to make sure they don't get it. Not with ease, at least. Is Yaki now the target of the London oh, Spitfire? Right. Lee Jigon hit the two-man beats. The two-man was on Bird Ring. It was coming back, but Is Yaki is down. The point's still in control, though, with the Uprising. And Lee Jigon is just running around. Where is he going? They can't shut him down. The sound barrier was a little bit late. He wanted to turn the fight. But with both supports going down from the Boston Uprising, the point should go to the Spitfire. I'm sticking up here, Scott. 60, 70% of the ball for the Boston Uprising. Somehow they're still in control. Maybe they can go for the touch. There's the slam on the ground. Smurf pops the ult, instantly gets taken out. That wall from Backbone, pretty clutch there. Stops all that damage coming down from the Terra Surge. If it did end up connecting, of course, but Smurf got killed, I think, mid usage. And there, finally, the Spitfire get the cap. 71% though, the Uprising were just able to hold on to everything for that little bit longer as Decay switches over to the Genji like I was speaking about earlier. Wants to have that deflect, wants to have that big blade that can turn the fights. Fortunately for the Spitfire, they've retained most of their ultimates, they still have the sound barrier. No counter right here from Sparker as he's in the turret form, almost gets booped off the map there. Here comes the Meteors, no, not quite getting anybody. A little bit of damage, but it does force the beat onto Admiral. As the window from his Yaki comes out, there is the ult from the Bastion. Nothing but a little bit of tickle there on Decay, but it was actually enough. Sparker ends up falling, same with Decay. They trade DPS, but the main damage shot oh, right now from... <laughs> That's 
Spitfire is landing behind that window. Legion's off the map. Another Spitfire win yet another fight. Oh, good stagger actually onto Izayaki too. Oh, nice pin. See ya! Give him a wave, see Izayaki, lol! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark from Backbone. Getting in with the mental warfare. The boss and Uprising, they're living by the Lee J Gone and dying by the Lee J Gone right now. He's trying to play aggressive, be a nuisance. That was so disruptive the last time they played. He hasn't been able to come up with the same amount of value so far. Extremely high amounts of environmental kills from Lee J Gone this season. One of the top in the league, but top in the league on Lucio for deaths too. Nice little bit on Decay, just managed to clamber back up onto the map. And now comes the push from the boss nut rising. There is a wall available from Backbone 2. There's the amp from Admiral. They're gonna rush on forward. They see Lee going. he's pretty low. The wall comes out. Healing from Admiral. He's trying to keep Hardy up, but the window is just too good. Birdring finds one, two kills of Backbone and Hardy. Izayaki's fighting for his life. But it's Admiral that should be praying. 95% for the Spitfire. And with the flip going over to the Uprising, we're likely in one more fight, and the Uprising were able to hold on to their Sound Barrier and the Blade. Decay's Genji has been okay so far this season. He needs to come in clutch. We need playoff Decay to step up with this blade. There's a lot of ults, Scott, but the beat from Admiral could be the difference maker. Lijagon's got one to counter, though. Maybe Blade to force out the beat, send Smurf in with the Terror Surge. Decay looking at five members of London, taking the teleport. Oh, there's the ult from Bird Ring. They do end up... Uh, Blocking it with Hardy Shield. The blade's been pulled though, and guess who's in the front line? It is landed. Decay with a monstrous two kills. Can he follow up with some more? The Terror Surge is good enough for another. The Boston Uprising taking the first round on for London. If oh no, there's just too many boots for Admiral to get back. On Spitfire's map pick, it is Boston that takes the first round. That is the round that is the worst for the Reinhardt composition, so the one you would expect to lose, but you can see the Uprising more than comfortable to continue to play this Orisa Genji Bastion. They understand how to play it. The amount of value that they get with these Izayaki amplification matrices, every time they drop them, they seem to just be putting out too much damage for the Spitfire to handle. And now we head over to Control Center. And I expect to see the same thing throughout the rest of this series. Smurf on the Orisa, Hardy on the Reinhardt. It's got to be at least for the control map. No changes. Yeah, Decay, okay. Decay sticking on the Genji 2, Scott. It's all about the mid fight. No TP, of course, so London will get there first, more than likely. There you go. And with the Symmetra turrets up, the boss and Uprising deciding they do want, don't want to fight into that as Birdring's actually tending towards the outside area. The one thing you need to be careful of is another Symmetra teleporter onto your backline at any moment. Maybe waiting for Birdring to pop the turret for him. You don't really want to teleport onto that. A little bit of high ground advantage there from Backbone, as well as Sparker. Does get a speed, but it's all good. Just teleport back down. Decay was uh, merely a fly on the wall for that engagement. There's Smurf in the back line, already popped the Golden. He's a little bit more resistant to damage. Use that to a pretty decent advantage there, creating a lot of space for the boss not rising. Hardy goes for the pin in. They did lose Smurf, so a lot of that frontline pressure on the London Spitfire has been lost as Smurf has only just spawned now. Hardy's going to charge in. Boss not racing, do you control the point now, Scott? Yeah, but uh, Smurf's not around, and that's why the London Spitfire are trying to step up early. They're trying. Landon's taking a little bit of damage from Decay, who's being quite annoying on the sidelines. High ground control from Izayaki, but Backbone with another TP gets pooped off the high ground. And that window is not used by anybody now. Boss not racing, still in control though, Scott. It's been London Spitfire just kind of playing ring around the rosy with these TPs. But Boston had a pretty decent time on the point, 32%. Really smart play from the Spitfire. Their understanding of how to play the composition and their advantages is what makes them great. Realizing Smurf isn't there, Hardy can just pin in with no consequences and is able to take the point without really using any ultimates at all. Okay, so a blade in 4%. Hardy, oh, hello. Almost pinned him there. No deflect for Decay, feels pretty bad, but here is Bird Ring. Mortar Strike coming out. One going for Sparker, one going for Backbone. Ooh. Another one for Sparker. And there's the wall. Decay pretty low. Deflect used again. They're going to have to play rather safe, but no, they use the beat to try and get in there. Terra Surge in the back. Lamp has to be dealt with. It does land. It's landed. But Sparker with a double kill with the Mortar Strike. That was a counter. You see the Terra Surge come down from Smurf. But Sp Sparker has suppressive fire, and the boss and Uprising ran into a trap. London Spitfire. Ho oh, oh. ho. They know Leech gone with no beat. They used it for the engagement, so Smurf was pretty damn vulnerable.
to that ult. Luckily, Sparker stayed alive. Those were big ultimates from the Uprising as well. Sound Barrier, Terror Surge, Blade, even the Bastion ult to give them the space. So London Spitfire in prime position to take this round. Shatter, and you can tell Hardy. TP Shatter on the back line. It hits Birdring into K, is already dead. Nice little window they get. Is he yaki? No one there to use it. They were cuddling on the mega health pack, but it is Sparker that dished out the damage. And now London Spitfire holding close. They got one more fight. Another ultimate that goes by the wayside by the Uprising. So now they have absolutely nothing with one team fight to touch. Lee J gone and Decay. They're going to try and take the fight, draw the Spitfire back by being the ones to touch. A little duo mission. Looks like Lee J. <laughs> Lee J gone. He could be raw right <laughs> He seemed just playing his own off. game. Yeah, he actually is. London Spitfire pretty happy with that though. There's the touch on the point. Window for Land is still available. He's actually going to put it down for the retake. Smurf with no spear spin. They've got to be careful. Someone's going to protect Backbone. Sparker takes him out through the window. And now he's up to Decay to try and just clear this backline out. But he's just, they're just too strong. A TP through with the. <laughs> look at that. Smurf doesn't know where to look. Turn magical initiated. Act. He's even got the ult if he needs it, but I don't think they're going to. The London Spitfire handily taking this round away from the Boston Uprising. They tie control up. That's how the Spitfire got to these playoffs. They handily dispatch a lot of the teams in the West by just coordinating their team through the Symmetra Teleporter. Their understanding and also just deep playbook of how to use the Teleporter is unmatched. It's what makes it so difficult for Decay to get value with Blade, Smurf to get value with the Terra Surge because every time you think you're taking a fight with the Spitfire, they end up somewhere else. Well, here you go. It was Sparker's old look at that. And Decay took so much damage there too, like oh, crazy. He took a little bit from one mortar and killed with the next. That was really rough. And nice little adaptation too. They know what Smurf wants to get into the back and pop that Terror Surge. And they had no beat. We're going to see once again the London Spitfire, because they're playing the Symmetra, they will be the first team to get to the point. They don't even want to fight in the middle. They just want to run around the outside, get to the point, set up the Symmetra turrets. Yep, no speed TP. It was TP then speed. They know Decay's playing the Genji, so there's no point matching them in the air. Those turrets can be quite annoying too, of course, when you do go for the entry. Looks like they're going to give a little bit of space, but Whoop. a little bit of space, unless you teleport. Nice little spin there from Smurf, actually pushes Sparker away and off the map. They saw that teleporter going down, and Smurf says, fine, Ooh. have it your way. Another spear kill for Smurf. Three kills. Four kills, in fact. Smurf didn't get that roll star and he took that personally. Oh, he's yeah. so good at so many different heroes. It's why he's considered one of the greatest of all time to play the game. You called it perfectly, Jack. The spear pit spin pushes everyone away from the Symmetra teleporter and disjoints the London Spitfire. He's a champion for a reason. Wants to look for another one on a different team. Spear connects with Sparker. They're slowly making their way in now. There's the turret mode, another spear does land, stops a little bit of damage through the window, goes the grenade, but a fire strike lands directly in the center of Smurf's chest. An easy kill for Hardy, one that he's very much used to at this point. Nice little stagger too, but is Yaki, and there is the flip. Once again, we're looking at the same situation, Scott, about 30%. But the London Spitfire, they just brawl better. Their composition is better once they start getting their ultimates online. Trying to find a sneaky pick. And actually, a little play that Backbone did in that last one is they used the Teleporter as a bait. They shot it into the back line. Everyone from Uprising ran away. And then they end up killing Smurf in the front line. That's what I'm talking about with the deep playbook with the Symmetra. So many tricks up their sleeve. And probably some we haven't even seen yet, right? Yep. Teleport, okay, no fakie this time. There is the window. A lot of stuff happening right now, but that terror surge lands, but it actually just destroys the lamp. That's about it. Smurf once again suffering from his own hubris. Double beat coming in. Sparker connects no mortars, but he doesn't need to. He's got the little cannon, he's got the grenade, they got the damage and the kills. Boston did end up capping through that fight, so they do get a little percentage there. Stop Spitfire, but at the end of the day, with Spitfire capping and Hardy having Shatter, Landon having Window, these rotation of ultimate, Scott, it's just too much. Yeah, that's that's what it is, Lon and Spitfire. They just have an understanding of how to do it, and the Boston Uprising haven't been able to deal with it so far in this round. But once again, I'm looking at Decay with this Genji Blade. There isn't a sound barrier on the other side to counter it. He needs to be finding value once again. He did it on the first round. Can he do it again? Looking for an entry there. The Shattered Decay dashes out of the way. Straight for the Lucio, but he gets moved away. Admiral just escorted himself out, and he gets taken down. Smurf takes care of Backbone, but that's about it. Team kill for the London Spitfire. 
They just can't find a way in. There's just too much damage. Too much movement from the Spitfire, and now last fight here for the Boston Uprising. The only thing they have is the Bastion Ultimate. Can they use it to give themselves a little bit of space and get into this fight? Maybe give time for Iziaki to get up his Amplification Matrix. So many corners though, Scott. It's so hard to get that Bastion ult down. You're walking into Symmetra Teleport. Uh, you could get Terrence as well. As well? Yeah. Quick TP. All right, Birdering. More to strike, but there they are. Straight from the high ground. Teleport into the window. That lamps are already gone. Iziaki carrying in the corner, getting microwaved by the turrets. The London Spitfire have ults to spare. Boston may have capped, but it's all on decay. Pretty low HP, has to escort himself out, but no! Landed escorts him to spawn. Another team kill, and are they going to be out to back? No touches! Back? No touches? The London Spitfire on their map pick. Pick up the W and start the series off with a bang. We said heading into this series, this is the map that they should feel most at home and they need to win. And they get the job done. If you're the Boston Uprising, you're dealing with this once again as the crowd. On their side. That man, the Reinhardt Chatty, he's just a different beast. Loser's pick though, Scott, of course. Now Boston Uprising get to go somewhere that maybe the Boston, uh, the London Spitfire don't want to play. Of course, it will be Hybrid up next. Oh yeah, Hybrid up next. And as you said, because we have the loser's pick, we could end up anywhere. The Boston Uprising can move to maps that favor their strengths. Because you can see right here on Li Jing, Zhang Tower, on these highlights, this map is just not built for the Decay Genji, and there's just too many options for the Spitfire to maneuver and teleport around the map. Oh, oh, oh. A lot of the time, too. They're putting a lot of pressure on Iziaki with these teleports. It's so hard to know where to lamp to, because they teleport like in yep. the center of your team. Where do you throw that lamp? There's three different directions your team is going, plus yourself. A lot of the time, Iziaki's kind of trapped in a corner on his lonesome, having to lamp and just try and stay alive and heal. You saw in that last fight, Iziaki is like, well, I'm just going to step over here, and there's some Metro Tower. It's just beaming him down. There's just so many threats to deal with time and time again. And so far, the Uprising haven't been able to come up with too many answers. I mean, just... that was so nice. The way that they play is just a different level on the Reinhardt. That's why you'll never see a team try and mirror them on the Reinhardt. No, absolutely not. That's grand finals material right there, I think, if London end up making it. Picks coming up in just a moment. Of course, Uprising probably don't want to go to Kings or anything like that. Maybe a little bit of Midtown. Yeah, Midtown was the pick for the Boston Uprising last time, but wow. they're going to Kings Row. Kings this is a Row a against fan favorite. a Reincom. But it is deceivably not that much of a Reinhardt map because there are a lot of high grounds. In the past, yes, it was great for Reinhardt, but since we've moved over to Overwatch 2, it's been very difficult to really enable that kind of play, but if anyone's going to make it work, it'll be the London Spitfire. It'll be London, eh? High ground don't matter if you've got teleport. That's true. You just zip up to height. Easy, easy. The Boston Uprising and the London Spitfire facing off. London take an early lead. Can Boston come back? Find out after the break.
Do you spit fire? <laughs> yeah, they do. Of course they do. London yeah. Spitfire up one map so far, Scott. On their map choice, two, Li Zhang Tala. Boss not rising to is in King's Row is the uh, hybrid map of choice. It's a map we haven't really, really seen really much throughout the entirety of the season. Getting a little up for you guys. Yo, yo. I'm sorry about that. You know, don't, don't mind no, me. Blame Scott. Blame Scott. But the Boston Uprising. This is a great team throughout the entirety of the season, who've just been so yes, flexible in different compositions. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been surprising to not see them pull out any different looks. We were questioning the Zaya. We were questioning whether or not the meta or the patch changes would, you know, honestly change any of the types of things that Boston would play. But it feels like right now they're more than happy to play against London. That was a sick uh, Giga Chat. <laughs> what was the meme? It was like, no, you can't play Ryan. You can't play Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Chatty. He do be him. Boss not rising now, going to King's Row. And yeah, you, you mentioned it just before we went to the break, Scott. A long time ago, it was like, oh, a lot of Ryan here yep. most of the time. But seeing Smurf come out on the Arista, and no substitutions either, by the way. So we're not seeing Kalios. We're just seeing Smurf again. So maybe a little bit more Arissa. Oh, again, Winston, because there's a lot of that high ground. But I gotta be, you've got to be still scared. I mean, the ability for London Spitfire to get on your back line with these TPs, it's going to be an interesting case, I think. <laughs> okay. The, okay, don't... Maybe. No, it, it, maybe. Just think about it. it Lifeweaver's been getting a lot of buffs. Talking about patch notes. Right? Practice paying off. Maybe Lee Jae Gon's been throwing some of their games, playing oh. a bit of Life Weaver in the ranks. We've hey. been reported for that. Uh, uh, we have been reported by that by, by Unter, Unter of all people. Yeah, by the way, Un enough. Unter reporting both me and Scott for throwing on Life Weaver. It wasn't me, it was Scott. Yeah, um, that's my bad. Just want to put that out But uh, we're going to see Boston Uprising double down, really believing in this Orisa Bash and Genji. And you can't blame them, honestly. This is how they beat them last time. and. The patch didn't really change much for any of these heroes, so you have to be confident. Hey, if we get to maps that favor us, then we can find the advantages. There's the TP. There it is. Goodbye. Boss not rising. Nice bit of deflection damage there. Sparker. Sparker currently a magnet for every single one of those spears. London on the point. The point's going to start ticking up. The uprising don't want to take the fight right away. Oh, here come the turret forms. Sparker like bumping their chest, like get back. Already a tick on the board for London Spitfire. And Decay, one HP, same with Smurf, all super low. London Spitfire just taking it to him right now. Even TPing up the high ground. Should reset and cool down. Window available for landing. Maybe a little bit of a surprise. Is he actually oh, caught? Oh, nice little boop. There's the window. In fact, make it two. Hardy, one HP. He manages to get away. Sparker now holding the corner. Has to back away. Turret mode disappearing for both Bastions. And another teleport. This time, London going back to main. The Sparker unleashing the Mortar Strike. Charging from Hardy to try and push him in. But no, it's actually Decay that falls to Landon. And here's the swings from Hardy. A lot of AoE damage. Loses his shield. But the beat from Lee Jae Gon. It's a four man. Sparker dead. What are London going to do now? They're going to try and just get him onto the back. Hardy not close to the shadow. He's 20% away. But they still hit the wall. This fight is still going. Point Terror almost capped. TP away. But they still need to touch to the Boston Uprising. They're so close to capping. Beat Admiral. Hits four. Smurf in trouble. Smurf down. DJ gone. No one can touch. Not even Decay. No resets there as the London Spitfire take a two minute fight and they come out on top. The point pressure was just too much for the London Spitfire. They kept forcing the Uprising players to have to keep touching the point. Cloud9 represent. Shout out to Cloud9. But London Spitfire, they just, this is what they did against the San Francisco Shock. They forced the objective, forced you to come into them where they are stronger. And you said it was a two minute fight, but that doesn't matter as long as they get the cap in the end. Okay, it has got the blade once again. Hardy has a shatter. He tries to shatter the blade most of the time. It's a difficult one to hit, but if he can just slow Decay down or even make him afraid of it, that'll be worth. Oh, there it is. There's the space created. I don't think there's going to be a blade needed either. Another very early, early um, window from Miziaki. Smurf and Burdering do go down in that fight, though. Rather scrappy, and you're not going to be able to hold forward here. Decay can maybe touch the payload, but they have to back up. The ha too good. Hardy's already back. The closer spawns for the London Spitfire is going to give them advantage back. Uprising will get an effective fight at the back half, but... Now they only need to win that one team fight. And they have so many ultimates to deal with. They have their own amplification matrix. 
Hada Uprising get in with Decay and get value from this blade at all. TP, Shatter, Speed. They got Smurf Beast blocking off all the heals. The charge comes through, but here's the blade from Decay. He takes care of the lamp and Hardy's already dead. Smurf with the spear onto Backbone. Decay has done the work, forcing all the cooldowns out from London Spitfire. And a nice little stagger onto Lander too. Back. <laughs> Cheating lamp? Is that cheating? Cha is that cheating? Cha I think using your abilities is cheating. Oh, that, that, that is, is a disgusting stagger. That, what was that? 10, 15 seconds. Wait, oh, the trade it, is yucky. Is he yucky? Oh, 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 oh! London hitting the question marks. Unfortunately for London, they don't have the sound barrier. If they no. have the sound barrier, I <laughs> could see them in. just going for They're it, going but it in. isn't going to be enough. I think Hardy getting a little too cute with these teleporter earth shatters. They're not finding the value they need to, almost baiting themselves into a bad position. Yeah, you saw Smurf 180. As soon as he heard that TP, he threw a spear. Yeah. Didn't cancel the shatter at all. He ended up going down, but. The lamps. Artillery right, strike from Birdring. Artillery strike. Where is it going to land? Hardy's waiting. There it is. All right, in the back line. Backbone getting sped out there by Admiral. Okay. It's hard to find value when there's nothing else going on the map. Right. Waste a little bit of time though, and that can be valuable. There is the wall. Decay on the other side of it needs some heals. Terra Surge comes out. Sound Baron for the boss now, rising at Apple's dead. London Spitfire, even with a wall and a window. They cannot match up to, against Smur. I mean, you just kind of run through there. Here's the Terra Surge, gets the damage resistant. The rest is history, really. Oh, nice spear on Hardy. And that's going to be a stagger on Hardy as well. More time coming off the clock. Are London are trying to oh, save him, no, but the staggers are too good. And this is the thing about London. Every single one of their players can make a play in the right situation. Lee J Gon had a great boot on Admiral in the Terra Surge in the last fight. Every single player can pop off. And that's what makes the Uprising a scary team. When they are standing stalwart, when they're making plays, they're just so difficult to do anything. And the Spitfire, they spent the last three minutes almost accomplishing nothing. Right. Right, there's the teleport. Trying to go for a different route this time around. Oh, joke's on you, just went through the bar. <laughs> yeah, you can see Sparker. He has the artillery strike. It's pretty much the only major ultimate they have online right now. He's going to use it to give them a little bit of space. Straight behind the window, bird ring. Again, only taking a tickle. They can't push forward on that because the window's up. Great play. Uprising recognizes it, responds in their own manner. They're happy to trade that ult one for one. Ooh. That needle was one shot backbone. Wow. It does 200 oh. damage still, but sticks you. Yeah, right. Hardy stepping up with the Earth Shatter. Bit of a test pseudo formation on the front lines here. He lays down oh, the no Shatter. Oh, no one there! Swap sides. He's trying to still swing, but that turret form was just almost laying waste to him. But Kay ends up going down. They do trade DPS once more. Here comes the Mortar Strike. Hardy, shield to the skies to protect the rest of his team. And there's the window. Smurf, though. Let's just save cooldowns for this. This window, you can't really get an angle at all. It's just a backup for Boston. It needed to be a little bit further so they could capitalize on the advantage, but Uprising smartly just back up, and now 30 seconds remaining. One more fight for the Spitfire. Terra Surge and Smurf does the same thing again, just walks through it. Here it comes. Spear, Terra Surge in, pulls three. Sound barrier to protect him. It lands, and there's the follow-up from Decay and Bird Ring. 19 seconds to go for the London Spitfire. I mean, Boston, they have a blade, they have a window, Scott, there's so many tools, and Backbone going somber to get the touch. He's, he's hoping he can find some alternate route to the point. Oh, what a Because no one else is going to get there, but he's so far away, there's no chance. Three, two, one, no touch for the London Spitfire. Boston Uprising stopping that Palo just before that second point. You can understand why the Uprising chose this map. They had a great understanding of how they wanted to play the second point. And the London Spitfire, because of how narrow the corners are, and the streets are, and the corners are just everywhere, they can't get effective teleporters other than in front or behind them. So they can't take alternate routes, they can't go anywhere else. And the Uprising win in a straight up fight with the Orisa shooting down the corridor. Yeah. These windows have been so valuable too, especially on the first point for London Spitfire, but more so for Boston either just navigating away from London's or just like putting them up when you're trying to make space with that artillery strike. I like what you said, yeah, just they have just a response to that. If you want to try and make a play, send Hardy in with the speed boost after the artillery strike's being used, then kind of disrupt you, push them into Hardy kind of thing. They put up a window and you can't move through that because the Bastion's just sitting there shooting. Something I personally would actually like to see the London Spitfire do is maybe move Backbone over to the May. It's right. been a change that they've done in the past, and if the Symmetra's not finding that effectiveness, maybe dropping the walls and isolating the tank like Smurf could be big or oh, dangerous from Lee J. God. Great boot. That was the boot I was talking about that caught Admiral off guard. Ends up getting additional value for the Terra Surge. His middle name is Danger. Lee J. God. Is it? 
I mean, looking at the stats, yeah. That's true, that's true. He does like to play literally on the edge. He's one of the highest environmental kill Lucios we have in the league currently. His stats are actually just incredible when you look at them because you would think he would have low healing with how aggressive he likes to play, but he's very high up there. As you can see, the boss and uprising and Lee J gone going into danger. You're yeah. right, middle name, starting <laughs> yeah. to check out. Exactly. Trying to get the nice little boot there off the high ground, but London actually just take the low ground themselves. The nice little TP. Smurf is uh, very low already. Nice use of the deflection there from Decay. One tick. Almost. They're not going to get it. London Spitfire don't want to give a tick away this early in the round without even offering anything. But you can see how afraid the uprising are of the Symmetra teleporter. Yeah, Burden's playing off uh, on his lonesome. There he comes the push. Window defensively used. But Smurf just walks through it again. What's the best way to break a window? Well, just walk through it. Shatter it. And landed. Oh, just oh, having a bad day. Oh, oh. Dear. <laughs> He's a champ for a reason. No Boss respect. Rising and taking that first point now, and that payload's gonna get a move on. And that's what makes Orisa strong as a hero, is you can just fortify, spear spin, run into the back line. There's not many responses the Spitfire can have, especially if they put down the Amp Matrix and he just runs through it. Now, Boss and Uprising, they have the Amplification Matrix and five minutes to only get it to this golden box of victory. Pretty scary. Izayaki playing on the point right now, can use the window pretty far range if he needs to but not holding the choke, that's what's important uh, for Boston. And there's the window. Nice teleport out, though. They, di they really do just disappear in the middle of the fire, it's crazy. That's a play that the Spitfire love to do when they know they're at an ultimate disadvantage. They do it oh. against Genji Blade as well. Oh, Excuse wow. Excuse me? That's d dangerous for the Spitfire. They need to peel back. They do. Teleport away. Here comes the artillery strike from Birdring. If finds another pick, it would be quite a, kind of sick, but no. Hardy's there with the shield again. But look at the payload, Scott. Spitfire, they might even have to teleport to even touch the point. And this is why Smurf's playing so aggressive. He's trying to be a threat. Make the Spitfire have to run through him to get to the point. Got a lot of Whoa! Legion has been found. He's trying to get some uh, cheeky little boots there. Terra Surge coming in. No boop kills. Oh, oh he did go spot. What? How? Is the Yaki's on the point? Someone has to touch. No one is there. The Boston Outrising handily taking care of the London Spitfire. A pure dismantling on King's Row. I love the Terra Surge into the Lucio Boop at the edge of the map. That's a classic that we haven't seen in a really long time. Popularized, actually, funnily enough, by the San Francisco Shock. So we can see the Boston Uprising. They have some plays in their playbook as well, and they take it to the London Spitfire, showing why they're more than willing to take the same matchup that they did two weeks ago. Right. It was scary, too. A lot of teams are like, well, we do really want to face London because prepping for London is very different from prepping any other team. We hear in interviews all the time and like on broadcast or um, with Yiska or whoever, right? And we speak to them, it's like, oh, how do you prepare for X, Y, or Z team? It's like, oh, well, for a lot of teams, it's quite easy. But for London, you can't really prep against London versus another team. You can't be like, hey, could you play the Sim TP comp with the mine? Like, <laughs> and be really good at and it. And be really well. <laughs> good at it, yeah. So they're a tough team to actually prep for. But right now, Boston Uprising, they seem to have figured it out. Moby Dick actually said in an interview, the head coach of the Boston Uprising said, when we went up against London Spitfire and the bracket was decided, we're more than happy to take them on. They're not afraid, they've beaten it. They don't have that same fear that some of these other teams have where it's like, we've been beaten by it before, we don't really know how to deal with it. Boston really showing that they have an understanding of how to deal with it on certain maps. Well, the series is tied now. It's London Spitfire's map choice, Scott. And it will very much come down to that, I feel. Every single series that London is going to play this tournament, this playoffs. It's map pick for them. Flashpoint, where do you think we're going to go? The thing about Flashpoint is you only have two maps, Suravasa and New Junk City, and both of them play in somewhat of a similar way of how Flashpoint is, because we haven't really solved it. It's only just come into the Overwatch League. Most teams have been preferring to go over to Suravasa because it's a little bit more open. And if I'm the Spitfire, I would believe in that. But with how narrow and how many corners and just really how much of a maze New Junk City is, maybe that confusion could aid the London Spitfire. Right, we're just getting their pick through now. Just waiting a couple of moments for Spitfire to lock it in. And we'll see. And then, of course, push and escort. We're definitely going to map five. I've definitely. Got I've got a feeling in my bones. Sure, guarantee. 
Flashpoint's just a bigger control, right? That is true. That is true. But that's what I thought the last time London and Boston played. I thought, well, London should feel very at home. They are very good at Flashpoint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Agree. Okay, agree. He, he's absolutely agreeing. Hardy, Hardy dip. dip. Okay. Yeah, facts. All analysis out the window. Hardy what dip. this guy said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, Gab. I mean, there was a couple of times there actually where, you know, getting picked off at the very end, that's it. It's done and over with. If your support ends up dying, these comps just kind of fall apart and here you go. It's actually going to be... London Spitfire taking us to New Junk City. It feels like an age since we've seen New Junk City because Surabasa, like you mentioned, is more favored for a lot of teams right now. Yeah, and as I said, New Junk City, so many twists and turns, you never know what you're going to expect. Right, let's go to a quick break. Don't go anywhere. London and Boston, they're one apiece. London's map choice. We're going to New Junk City after this. There's a champion on your screens right now, hunting, searching for another one. 
This time on a different team on the Boston Uprising, it is Smurf. So look at some Arissa stats Ooh. from that last map. Only three deaths and really showing the strength of Arissa. Because you're just so sustainable on your own, you have the Fortify, you have the Sphere Spin, and then when you combo this ultimate right here with some great team play, it doesn't always find picks, but it does so much damage and displaces the opposition team that usually you get so much value. Yeah, you see a lot of the time when he is using that ult too, you did decay instantly here in the ship. Dash straight through everybody, so everybody's super low. And it's, it's really tough to kind of get out of too. You're forced to use lap, maybe even maybe even beat right or speed to get That's out of there. And just mean. That'll be a bad BM. You'd love to see it. Give away, Smurf. Dude is calm right now. Ah, he's a two-time champion. This is just another day at the office for a man like Smurf. We go back into the server, over to New Junk City, Spitfire pick, onto Flashpoint, theoretically a Reinhardt map where their Symmetra Teleporter can find more value. Well, let's go. Let's get into it. Spitfire and Boston, their first match of the playoffs. One Spitfire's map choice to start off with, they took it. 2-1 though, and then Uprising, it was really just a dismantle on King's Row. But let's load in to New Junk City for Flashpoints. I wonder if there is a world where we see Spitfire make that adaptation over to the May on a map like New Junk City. A lot of chokes where you can pop up a wall and find a value. Also, because you're fighting inside a lot of the time, Blizzard even gets more value than you would usually expect it to. Music's so good. I agree with Hardy. It's kind of it, banging. It is a little banger. Backbone, uh, a professional player, doesn't play with music on. Yeah. Ridiculous, honestly. Insane. Yeah, what? what? Not even like low? No. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like both teams are going to come out playing the exact same thing. Better get used to it. I don't see either team making any swaps, no matter what map we end up on. Will Backbone switch over to the May? I doubt it. No, it doesn't look like it. Just sim. Nope, going sim, through. Sim. All right. Let's go to the center point then. And yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to see a big change at all. We've seen a lot of variation already in the playoffs, but when you're playing against a team like London, you've got a comp that you know kind of works against them because you know they're not going to change. Yeah. Gonna wait for that TP cooldown, I'd imagine, for Backbone. Look at them all backing up. There's the teleport behind. Instantly oh. taken out Izayaki. Wow. That nade. Pixel perfect precision. And that's the coordination that the Spitfire do better than anyone else. As soon as they were through that teleporter, everyone 180s hits Izayaki and there's almost nothing he can do. The Uprising were prepared for it. They knew it was coming, yet they still could not stop it. My god. At this point, they tick up so fast too. And they're not going to have a lot of time really to navigate and force these TPs out of London Spitfire. They just have to go already at 25%. Uprising trying to take a different direction. Oops, sneaky beaky light going in through the left door actually. Uh, those turrets are gonna. It's a little alarm system, I think, for the London Spitfire. There goes the turret. Playing a little bit of this low ground here. Lee Jae Gon almost taking all of his health in terms of damage. Ooh. There it is. The window is just too much. I mean, when you're grouped up like that, one grenade will do it normally. There you go. There's the kill. How much? 64% for London. Seems to be the idea that the Uprising would go for. Wait for the teleporter to come through, try and mitigate the damage of it, and then go with your engage, because that's a big tool out of the Spitfire wheelhouse. But now with Uprising taking the point, both teams having ultimates come up. we got Bastion ultimates coming up. Actually, Furthering is very far away from his Bastion ultimate. Has not, has not much done damage. much damage in this round so far. Well, here goes the Bastion ult. Very quick. Sharpish for that first one. Oh, they should be able to get out. Yeah, Legion on the whole time just speeding away, but Decay, unfortunately, isolated away from his main healer in Izayaki. Already put down that lamp too, it's a good time for London Spitfire to pounce on them. Little dive bomb onto the points. Wall available for Backbone and Smurf, he's getting kept alive. There's the sound barrier. Teleport away, but Backbone's actually been booted into the low ground by Lee Gone. A little 2v1 with the supports. And of course, Backbone and Avril come out on top. A reflip at 71% and then chasing. Birdring away. I don't think you're escaping, unfortunately, son. Get out of there, Birdring! Oh, Bird oh, he's gone. And that should be point now for London Spitfire. And that absolutely will be point. You'll see the Uprising start to maneuver in a different direction. Waiting to see what point will be coming up next. All right, Admiral doing a little bit of checking. But oh, there you go. Arena over to London. 
And that was a big fight for the Uprighton because Lee Jae Gon tried to commit the sound barrier to overcome the deficit of a player that they're in. While Admiral, Admiral was able to hold on to his sound barrier, which once again will be there to counter the Decay Blade. All right, Refinery up next. Tears grenades like, coming out of nowhere. Speaking about coming out of nowhere, what? Whoa. Water strike. Oh, Hardy blocks the majority of that damage. Shatter available. They're waiting for that teleport. You can, you can see it. there's the TP, there's the shadow. It does hit. But can they follow this up? Sound barrier, everything being used. Night deflection damage from Decay there. But no, Terra Surge tracks Huge. everybody in. Play from Decay is just good, but no, Hardy is better. Swings through the shield and takes Decay out. So many low health bars, and you see Smurf and Decay over committing and the window into the back line. Birdering still comes up with one, but an over aggressive window there from Izayaki is going to cost them dearly. It's three ultimates that found almost no value, and Izayaki definitely would want that amplification matrix back. But Decay just still struggling to find any value with his blades. So now Spitfire once again in control of the point. They have a Bastion ultimate, they have an amplification matrix that the Uprising are going to have to walk into. These teleporter hardy shatters are getting a little out of control. I, I feel like he hasn't been finding the value he needs to find as Sparker pops the artillery strike. Oh, Uprising God. will just disengage. A little bit of time there for the London Spitfire. Yeah. Luckily, Izyaki's got a little bit of air control there when he uses his exo boots. There's the window. Oh, bird ring, unfortunately. A little bit too aggro. Ooh. Oh, that nade. Yo. No, it missed. You're going to see the London Spitfire. They're trying to set up. If they can find another pick, this will be huge for them. They'll they're, get they're the second go. point. They're going to go. They're waiting for the TP. No, okay. TP back to the point. Don't want to overextend. Got to be careful. Birding's coming back in just a moment, but this will be the last fight on Refinery, at least. Refinery is such a difficult point to touch. You can see them. They're going to have to navigate onto the high ground, but they want to get their support ultimates before they fight. Back to the point. London Spitfire taking a lot of damage there. Oh, from Oh, nice poop. Down for low ground, can they isolate someone? Apple trying to run for his life. He manages to get out of there, but it's actually Boston not rising now on the point. Sound barrier comes through from Boston. They find Landon. Now trapped on the high ground, a London Spitfire. Agbo at least kills one. Spear. Yeah, the crumbling corpse of Sparker. There's a sound barrier. They're still going. Hardy finds two in this fight. They're more than willing to try and turn this one around with the backbone still holding on to that ultimate. Fully charged up. Smurf didn't stand a chance. London find the flip. A miracle team fight there from London. And that will be, well, that's point yeah. two. One more, and they take the map in a clean 3-0. And you can just see Admiral was holding on to that sound barrier for the perfect moment, realizes his team is in a 3v3, pops it, gives his time, his team the advantage, and Hardy just uses that to a T. Runs at the Uprising. Looks like the Uprising, they're trying to cut off the London Spitfire from getting to the point. But Uprising will be the ones who start with control. Well, they do have the blade. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. Maybe they were trying to think about. Now they could play so far back too. Because they can teleport in at any exactly, moment. right? And they have the wall. They have the photon barrier, which they're going to use to get on top wall. of the point. Normal shatter from Hardy, maybe. There it is. That's straight onto Bird Ring. Pinged. No, it actually lands onto Smurf, but it doesn't matter. The damage is still done. Blade for Decay. A nice little boot. No dash resets for Decay, so can't follow up with additional kills. Still two dead DPS for the London Spear. Oh, but down. still got damage. They still got the window. But the center of this point, there's a giant column in the middle of it, so they're able to mitigate some of that damage from window, but just hiding away. Hardy's on the point, just a 1v1 for Smurf. The most boring 1v1 of history, I'd say. Smurf, Spear, Spin, Sparker, how do you get that kill? Terra Surge comes in, Smurf super low. Defensive use of the artillery strike there from Bird Ring. And yes, this fight is still going on, somehow. if I do end up getting the flip. That was a weird fight because both Baptiste players went down, so neither team had healing and were able to fully commit. But London Spitfire firmly in control, and if they get one more point, they will take the map. So Boston Uprising, been struggling so far, need to find a way. Yeah, bomb flats again, another tough spot for Boston Uprising to navigate, because there's so many corners that London can just kind of teleport around. Hardy's on the point, holding the fort, taking a lot of damage though. Yeah, the boop out of LOS of his healers. Is Yaki down again? Landon keeps coming up with the goods. Sound barrier, late one from Uprising. Maybe not needed, but to guarantee a cap, they've got to keep themselves in this, Scott. And you're happy if you're the Spitfire with that sound barrier going down. You're like, okay, as much as we lose that fight, that's a huge tool and resource that they won't have for the next fight while the London Spitfire holding onto a sound barrier of their own. A little bit of chip damage coming in from Decay as well as Birdring. 
Trying to get that blade. They really need that blade to force speed, just force something. If they're, they've been tracking ultimates effectively, they know they have the advantage. They can just take a straight up fight and use the sound barrier to just give them the extra health and let them go aggressive. I mean, Legion Gone's on 10%, mate. No way near that sound barrier just yet. Admiral amping it up, puts the speed there they go. on. There's the beat into the back line, goes Hardy. But no, Smurf stands in the way for the time being. Ain't no one moving past that shield wall. Lamp dead, Smurf still low. Hardy just blocking off most of those heals. The sound barrier not coming up with anything just yet. Where are the kills for London? They don't exist. The Boston Uprising, they bend back, but they do not break. London Spitfire, they thought they had the advantage. They thought they could go early, but the picks just weren't there. Smurf just stood there that whole time, just holding London back, burnt so much of that sound barrier away. And look at the ultimates for Boston now. A full five as they make their way to the next point. It will be Ducts. Decay, Blade once again, he hasn't been finding much value in this series at all, but Admiral doesn't have the sound barrier. So once again, Decay, I'm asking, come up clutch with this Blade. Even if he finds one pick, or at least does damage to the Spitfire, that's all he needs to do. One pick, and not force Landon, die. take Lamp out. Just put pressure on Landon. See if Hardy's gonna go for another TP Shadow Play. Didn't last time. Yeah. We do on the low ground? Okay. They have five ultimates, so this just gives them space. And you can see Decay taking the point. If they get the flip first, yeah, so big. There is the wall. Decay had to dash out, still with the blade in hand. I hear the artillery shot coming from somewhere. Sound barrier for Boston. And now, pedal to the metal, landing in their sights. Well, guess what's happening? Terror Surge with the blade! There's no surviving that. A quick, concise team kill for Boston as they cap. Throwing five ultimates at the problem, realizing they didn't have the point. Yes, it was expensive, but maybe necessary. So now all they have to do is deal with this spark of Bashanol because Spitfire committed lots of ult ultimates of their own. Yeah, big expensive fight, like you said. 30% and building. I want to see how they uh, end up pushing in off of this artillery strike. Just a couple on the high ground. Hardy Hardy with trying it. to, trying to negotiate. Uh, please move into the uh, artillery strike, please. Pretty please. Spark it down. Up trading. Land is super low again. They're just chasing him. He's so scared. He's on the low ground right now. No healing for Hardy, but does he really need it? I mean, Backbone's full charge right now. Is Yaki also struggling to keep Birdring alive? It's Decay up with the resets, but Landon takes another life. 75% for Boston and building. It's Lee J gone and Decay versus Landon and Avril. Respectable Decay is so two. low. It's not that respectable, mate. No, when you got Landon's aim. Landon has been a sneaky carry for the London Spitfire throughout this entire resurgence of this team. His Baptiste is number two in damage, number two in healing. Very impressive player that doesn't get enough respect on his name for the success that we're seeing from the Spitfire. All right, Spitfire now hold. They're one point away from taking this map, taking a lead in the series two. All right, quick rotation for London. They got window. They know what they're up against. All the land from Landon. Comes out just in time. Here comes the artillery oh, shot. They've got to do something! Spear into the wall. Hardy was nowhere to be seen. The sound barrier comes out from Apple, but it's too late. Izzyaki may have fallen, but look at Smurf's accuracy with these spears. Admiral is too low. Boston taking this to a point five by the looks of it. Backbone with a TP out is going the full distance on Flashpoint. And we're heading over to Junkyard. This is a very open point that you would theoretically think would favor the Uprising. But the London Spitfire, they have the positioning first because of where the spawn doors were for the Uprising. London's going to have all the time in the world to set up in the ways that they want. Yeah, on the high ground too, it could be quite, could be quite deadly, especially with the window. Ideally, you cap holding the high ground, then maybe TP behind them. Yeah, they also have the Photon Barrier to be able to just give them advantage in any fight which they want to take. You can see them actually baiting the Uprising in. They're playing quite far back, so then they can engage in more of the open. That wall is very, very far, far back. back. Oh, Hardy stepping up, though. There's the Spear Spin. Shad is still in the hand. Ooh. Hits them in the back. You've got to be careful. He's still there. No boot, bro. Boot. Very nice. No pin. Thanks to the boot. There's the Terror Surge dragging everybody in. A quick teleport away, but Sparkle wasn't quick enough. Smurf ends up paying for it with his life, but played, pulled by Decay. Playoffs Decay is well and truly here with these blades, Scott. No nano needed. That's exactly what we needed from him, Decay. When it was needed most, he stepped up. 
Fortunately for the Spitfire, they did get 30% for that fight because they got the flip going in, but that was an expensive fight to lose for the Spitfire. They don't really have many ultimates to get in at all because the artillery strike doesn't really offer enough. Well, we navigate this one. Uprising also baiting in the Spitfire, trying to put respect on the teleporter. All right, it's almost telegraphed at this point, opening with an artillery strike. Triple shot on the high ground, Birdring healed up. They've got one of their own now. They've also got a window, so London want to try and step up onto the point. They're going to have to deal with this window, but Izayaki knows they have teleport, so putting down the window could be a death sentence for them. Well, not so much anymore. They actually just take the high ground and actually trying to wrap around, kill Izayaki, put the lamp down and the window. Now London have to play safe, a little bit more passive. This is taking so much time, though. The Boston Uprising up to 70%. They only need one more team fight now. More time being burned off. Artillery strike coming in. One, two, three shots. Uprising have used a lot of ultimates to slow things down. Point. But the Lee Jagon has the sound barrier. Uh, Hardy with Earthshot at Admiral, 2% away from his own smurf. It's going to go in, they're going to try and make a play! Oh, Admiral! Oh, sub 50 HP, he still manages to get it off. Lee Jagon still with the sound barrier. They're happy just to take this fight, they know. London Spitfire only 31%. They burn the other team's beat. They have a better beat for the next fight. And they've got a blade coming up too. Beat blade could be the difference maker. Flashpoint. Almost in the hands of the Boston Uprising right now. Admiral dancing with death a little bit there. Almost Ajaxed, but Uprising. As you said, Jack, more than happy to give up that point because they have a beat of their own. Decay has the blade. We saw how clutch it was in the last time he had it. But Spitfire have answers. How do they respond? Do they want to TP with that Hardy? Do they want to go aggressive with the Photon Barrier? They can delay a lot of time here again, Scott, with this wall, the shatter. They've got everything they really need to force out the beat early if they really want. It's going to be a fight on the point for, that, that, for the map. How is he dead? Shatter hits the ground, but it only hits Hardy. I mean, uh, Smurf even. The blade has been pulled. The London Spitfire being cut to smithereens. Hardy is dead. Double kill for Decay. Backbone trying to make it even, but it wasn't to be the Boston Uprising on match point. Out of nowhere, just Landon falls, unable to utilize his own advantage. And from there, the Boston Uprising and Decay cutting down the Spitfire. And you can see they're back in business, almost playing out exactly how it did two weeks ago. London's Spitfire taking control, but as the maps open up, there's just no way that they can stand up to Uprising. Oh. The, the dozens of Boston Uprising fans in the crowd, they're starting to step up. Push is the next game mode again. Another choice here for the London Spitfire to make Boston Uprising on match points. They did it a couple of weeks ago, Scott. They beat London. Yeah. Can they do it again? Start the playoffs run. And with a lot of players that have been in this situation before, another day in the office for someone like Smurf. And you can see the issue that the Reinhardt composition is running into for the London Spitfire. There's just not enough damage to deal with all the threats and just the way that the Uprising play, it's, unless they have big ultimates, it doesn't feel like they ever have that major advantage. And if the Uprising play these fights correctly, exactly like this, the Spitfire just fall over. Can the Spitfire start to turn things around? We're going on to push, a game mode in which Reinhardt is very strong on, and then on Escort, anything can happen. I mean, those last couple of moments, just picking off Landon, I'm bird ring. Unretiring, by the way, to come back and play. For the third time or something like that? Something crazy, man. He's in the playoffs right now for Boston. Looks like, actually, we're going to New Queen Street. Spitfire's pick. Makes sense. New Queen Street is a very long corridor. You can get lots of values with teleporters. Great map for London. Great map for London. Can they take us to a map number five? We'll have to wait and see. After this break, it's going to be New Queen Street.
We are live here in Toronto. New Queen Street up next. London Spitfires, Matt Choice, but Boston Uprising right now on match point. And this man right here saunters onto the stage, knows his playoffs, and puts up stats like this. I asked for Decay to step up. I want to see playoff Decay. We're getting glimpses of it right now. This is definitely, definitely a difficult task to play Genji into the London Spitfire, but it needs to be done. And on New Junk City, he did a phenomenal job of getting the damage in, finding value from the Blades. Blade, nasty. Looks like London don't really have an answer to them at all. I mean, Landon, at that very end of that fight, Scott got picked off by Bird Ring. And it was just easy for Decay. Didn't have to worry about lamp or any healing, really, at all. Boss not rising on match point. London still get another chance later on, obviously, in the tournament. Scott, but Boston right now just want to make it a clean sweep. No, not clean sweep, of course. London took map one. But going on to New Queen Street, how are we thinking? Well, I expect to see the exact same thing from both teams. And London Spitfire coming up for answers as it feels like the Boston Uprising have just cracked the code of how you beat the London Spitfire. And if I know if I'm any other team and I'm watching this match against London, I'm, I'm sort of taking notes, jotting some things down. But one of the things that I think Boston Uprising do that is unique is they just play at such an exceptional level and have the same coordination level of the London Spitfire because that's how you beat them. You have to beat them at their own game. More Arisa, more Genji, more Bastion. Push is a bit of a push is a bit of an interesting one, especially when you think about how the sim teleports interact with the rest of the map, especially New Queen Street. It's so enclosed, especially that first point. And with a Lucio, it's so easy to kind of just run around people right around the bus. It's not like any of the other push maps, like Esperanza, right? You can't, on that first point, there's the giant spire, sure. But like a lot of this, the first push that you end up getting, they're, you're right next to the spawn. Like, it's so tough to actually fight. You need clean team fights. And London are very good at doing that, but they do rely heavily on their ultimates. And they rely heavily on their ultimates and the Symmetra teleporter usage. And that's the question that I have for London is, what have they worked out here that is going to be able to give them an advantage over what Boston Uprising have been doing? Because so far, it feels like Boston have been playing in a way of anticipating and then counting how the Symmetra Teleporter is going. So if they can live through that initial switch, something that they couldn't do on Li Zhang Tower, then all of a sudden, the London Spitfire, they don't have many tricks up their sleeve. All right, here we go as we load in. Toronto to Toronto. Toronto in Toronto. Crowd's ready, so are we. Boston, a team truly full of legends. Players that have won it before, and like you mentioned at the very start of the series, the very top of this one, Scott, was pre-built this team to win. Very much built this team. I mean, Smurf, championship winner, Bird Ring, I'm retired. Another winner, another champion. The thing that I'm interested to see from the Boston Uprising is how they play against other teams as well. We know this is how they uh, want to play against London Spitfire, but how are they going to play when they play against these other teams? Because Boston's weakness throughout this entire season has punching has been punching upwards. But as we go to New Queen Street, once again, both teams playing exactly the same thing. Oh yes. Quickest start out though from London. And here come the sad teleports. Are they taking it? Just an overwhelming amount of damage there almost. Doesn't want it snapped out of thin air just yet. Is the Aki too? Got to be careful with the with these grenades. They did get nerfed, Scott. The the Bastion grenades. The impact damage, yes. It's still very deadly. There's the teleport straight behind. But Boston, we know your game. We know your tricks. And then Spark is the one who falls exactly as you said, Jack. Izayaki's just so prepared. They're waiting for the teleporter that's going to go to the backline. That's going to try and punish and pick off a backliner. But Uprising, they've seen this too many times before, and it's. Just not working for the Spitfire. Yeah, you see them kind of clump up in a ball. As soon as they hear that teleporter go down, they clump up and they move towards the entrance of the teleporter because they know London are going to be right behind. And Smurf is almost just like running on top of his Baptiste and just spear spinning right. in the direction the Spitfire are going, mitigating all that damage. But now this is where it gets difficult for Uprising because London, they can waterfall out of the window, they can teleport behind. There's many options that they can do. But Iziaki with a window in a couple of percent, land and two. It was a very deadly first fight. A lot of healing and a lot of damage traded. There's the double windows. Better down. land, but land is already dead. Once again, Smurf almost predicting that land and would throw down that window and just runs straight through it. 
Oh, and that might be a very early capture here for the boss and uprising oh, on the first it's checkpoint. It's gonna be. Backbone staggered and all of a sudden Spitfire grasping at straws, trying to work out a play that's gonna, I guess, dismantle the uprising, just sort of make them feel a little uneasy. That is a fast checkpoint. And they have four ultimates to answer whatever the Spitfire throw at them as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they can just hold this corner too. London have to come to them. They know, but scratch Mo takes a little while. Backing up a little bit, moving to a more advantageous Burping position. on the high ground now, by the way, as well. Well, uh, Lee Jae gone. Uh, is Lee Jae gone to spawn? Same with Decay. Takes a nade for the face. All right, here's the clean fight that Spitfire need. They're still taking a little bit of time, though. They can't really lose anybody. And they don't. All good. Clean team kill there with Lee Jae gone going down first. That's what, wait, Lee Jae got Ajax? Ajax? I didn't even notice that he popped the sound hear, barrier on it. I didn't even it. hear the voice line. Wow, that is a big misstep for Lee Jae Gone. That's what? a massive swing for the Spitfire. That must have been very early on in the cast there, because it was... I want to see what happened to Lee Jae Gone yeah, now. what? But now, all of a sudden, the Spitfire, they're the ones moving. Uprising are the ones who have to come into them. Oh, oh, we caught that one in 4K, unfortunately, Hardy. Spark is dead, who's in the air? Blade, pull, decay. Oh, oh, oh no. London going from bad to worse there. There was uh, some mistakes made for the Spitfire in that one. So the mistake made by Lee Jae Gone all of a sudden is as, isn't as much of an issue. The Boston fans getting up there now. A lot of heat, a lot of shade being thrown either way. That ward is going to die too. Teleport around the back. Birdring in trouble. Boot down the lamp. And there's the window for London Spitfire. Just filling Boston Uprising with a whole lot of holes in them. Goodbye, Decay. But still, the Boston Uprising, they've got the forward spawn here. They might all be able to spawn in it too. That boy is fairly far away from that middle checkpoint. And that's that's why getting the capture so early for the Boston Uprising was so such a big yeah, advantage. They all it, got the same. Every time they win a team fight, that's now tough. it's going to swing back the other way, and the London Spitfire are the ones who are having to push the bot uphill in some respects. Yeah, I mean Hardy was on the bot alone there, just trying to get a little bit of progress. Murdering artillery strike, Landon holding down those XO boots. Goes to the sky, backbone pretty low. Receives a healing grenade. All good. Sped out the way to by Admiral. No real ultimates, both teams not really looking to blink. Wouldn't be surprised to see Sparker pop his own. Nice angle here from Sparker. And here comes the artillery strike straight on top of the back line, but no, a lot of damage. But there's the sound barrier from Legion gone. Hardy in no man's land right now as his back line is getting run down. Oh, Decay pushed off the map. Should be able to clamber back up though. Not to worry. Hardy in trouble now with no healing. Landon is dead. Decay is just a little fly in the sky right now. Just annoying Hardy to death. But Avril still comes up with a kill. Even trade so far from both teams at Birdring, still just dishing out damage, and Lee Jae gone, paying for his sins earlier on, coming out with kills. Hardy does not escape alive either. So many ultimates going back and forth, just jostling for position. But Boston are the ones who live just long enough. Lee Jae gone doing Lee Jae gone things, just dancing around the map, being such a nuisance and Spitfire. They haven't been able to find any traction, get any meterage. They're still only at 15 meters. Sure, Birdering there too actually capped the checkpoint again. So now they have forward spawn and London have to push it to that midpoint to cancel that one out. There's the shadow pushed away, still connects, hits three. The window's there though. Oh, Hardy through the bushes. Takes care of Lee gone again. Oh, what? Oh, big what? grenade. Birdering, hello? And more meterage goes up for the Boston Uprising. That was three ultimates for them, but now they're moving up 75 meters. A small mistake there by Huddy, just put down the shield for a brief moment and Birding just launched a nade in. Picked up a double kill, almost reaching the 100 meter mark here, Scott. Spitfire have the ultimates to win this one. They don't want to use too many though. Are they using two already? Oh, it, uh, Backbone and Admiral already dead. Both support ultimates still available for the London Spitfire. For exactly what I said, Spitfire, they don't want to have to use too many ultimates to take that fight for being a little bit too greedy, getting impatient. Backbone goes too aggressive, falls to the artillery strike, and it's getting from bad to worse for the Spitfire. Really is. Lee Jagon's 10% away from that beat too, and he's going to get that in just a moment. 
Double support off alone. Spitfire, they need to do something here. Scott, they need to do it now. Spear spin for a smurf. His eyes set to kill. Sparker in trouble. Sambara comes out, though. Lee Jia Gong with a better beat in a moment, you'd imagine. A lot of low health bars on the boss not rising as they do get forced Perfect. into the room, but there's the beat. Five man beat. Can they make use of it, though? Sparker in trouble, but no! A double kill with the artillery strike. They stop the bot for the time being, but they still need the kills. Birdring launched through the air with a little boop. Is the Aki still doing a fair bit, but there you go. They finally stop that bot, Scott, but at what cost? 115 meters for Boston. London need to get 100 meters extra on the board to keep their upper bracket run alive. You don't want to be a team that has to fall to the lower bracket, climb your way out. Right now, it's looking a little rough, but we've seen crazier things happen on push before. That, that's a great start. That is a fantastic start. All right, Bird Ring dead. You can back up here. Oh, hello. Oh, nice right click. Nice air shot. From Backbone. No deaths here for London Spitfire. That is what they desire. Okay, so they're going to get some of these meters back. You need to be careful if you're the boss in Uprising. Time and time again, we see teams just trying, oh, we don't need to win this fight. You give away too many fights, too many advantages. Then the next thing you know, you're in final fight territory. Decay has the blade. Admiral doesn't have the sound barrier. Decay was huge on New Junk City with these. Needs to stem the bleeding for the Uprising. Checkpoint in the science of Spitfire, but here comes the blade. Oh, that terror surge is good! Decay with three! Hardy in trouble, and so are the rest of London Spitfire. Two minutes to go, a clean team kill for Boston. I ask and Decay delivers perfect synergy with the Smurf Terror Surge as well. And now the bot running at record pace back up the point, and this is what Sp Spitfire has to deal with time and time again. A checkpoint almost recapped there. Burden from the high ground jumps down, uses the window, but Spark is already dead. A defensive window from Landon, but look at Smurf, just runs straight for it. Bird Ring the same, just wants to take the fight to their melee range for Bird Ring as he just runs down Hardy. One minute and 15 seconds to go. London Spitfire now on their last limbs. Admiral has a sound barrier. He can use that to sort of give them an advantage, but Lee Jae-Gon can also respond. But finally, the May that I was asking for from Backbone has finally come out, but is it a little too late? Sound barrier for both teams. Here comes the artillery strike from Bird Ring. It's going to create a lot of space. Backbone's going to be fine with a little ice block if he needs to use it, and he does. Could be a key target now for the boss not rising to run down. Wall comes in. There's the beat. Hits five men. So does the London Spitfire. No one down just yet, but Lou Decay just chunking away at Hardy's health bar. Artillery strike from the spawn. Sparker kills Izayaki. Birdring falls. And that is London still holding on. But with 30 seconds to go, they have to be perfect. Wait, they what, what, where's Hello? the bot? Uh, oh, yeah. Sneaky, Smurf peaky Smurf. Is still chilling. Another 10 seconds, burn off the clock. But look at the bot. Look at how far away they are, Scott. They need 90 meters or so to get themselves back in this map and series. A little bit of hope for the Spitfire. This is where the magic happens. When you get into overtime, spawns start getting longer. Anything can happen in push. If you're the Uprising, need to play calm, need to play poised. OT in session, no C9s please. Blade coming up from Decay. Same with the Terror Surge, the double deadly combo. It's available rather soon. Smurf just needs an avenue to get in. Howdy has the Earth Shatter. Decay's looking for a blade, but he doesn't need to do anything. It's the Spitfire who need to. Backbone's going super low. He's in the front line, force upon the block. High ground, window used. There's the Terror Surge, there's the Blade. They're all grouped up. Admiral in the sight of Decay. Two kills for the Blade. The boy is still moving, but it does not matter. The Boston Uprising, a team full of legends. Wanting to make their name once again, writing it down in the history books as they take the map and the match away from London. Boston just proving that they are the better team. London may be thinking, oh yeah, we lost last time, but we've learned from our mistakes. But Boston shutting that door, the series playing out exactly the way it did two weeks ago. No mercy spared for London Spitfire. Pretty much a repeat, like you said. They've done it once, they've done it again seem to have figured out how London Spitfire like to play. And of course, London came into this series with their map choice. Scott, Li Zhang Tower, they take it. But the Boston Uprising, they said, well, it doesn't matter what map you take us to next.
going to be ours. Boston with a strong start in the playoffs. Yeah, Boston is just a team full of superstars. As I said, I'm curious to see what else they're going to play in these playoffs now the meta has changed. Yes, obviously Arissa is great against the Reinhardt, but will it work against everyone else? And build on the Spitfire, down to the lower bracket. Now everyone has to fear you. Player of the match from this series. It's going to be the, the legend. Two -time, the legend, Smurf. So the rest of this series was just so, so sick. His spear accuracy is insane. Not only that, it, getting the damage in, but it was also just making himself a threat, giving the team space, and also just understanding how the Spitfire are playing and manipulating it against it. Struggled on the first map, but then as soon as that happened, you could see he was just the guy. We need to be the aggressors. We need to be the ones getting in the face of the Spitfire. And he did exactly that. There's no better man to win it this one time around. I mean, at the end of the day, boss not rising. They put a lot of talent on their team and people that have won championships before and they look like they want to do it again. No mercy spared at all. And with uh, stats like these, uh, yeah, you best believe Boston are here to play. Yeah, Boston are a scary team. Is their roster going to live up to the hype of what it was built for? Can they be a championship roster in the playoffs with a new patch? Anything's possible. Anything is possible. They've got more tricks up their sleeve. That is for certain. And like you said, what do they play against other squads now? Because you're going to run. Yeah, Arisa Genji worked out for London. But now, it's a scary group, Scott. Well, we've seen some Winston. We've seen lots of different pieces that we know the Boston Uprising can play. Yeah. But now if you're the London Spitfire, you're going down with that Ryan Hart ship. Is it going to stay afloat? Is it going to stay afloat? Not sure. London Spitfire definitely want to bounce back. They've got a lot of fans in the crowd, but so do Boston. We're going to send it actually to Danny down on the stage with an interview with Bird Ring. Charles and Costa, thank you very much, everybody. I am back here with Bird Ring from Boston Uprising. Big congratulations on getting the win. All right, I have to ask because this match was sort of a rematch uh, in the plains. You guys already beat London before. So because you guys already got the win well, against London before in the plains, was this sort of, you know, an easy win coming into the playoffs? 자, 첫 번째 질문으로 오늘 일단 경기 승리 축하드리면서 아무래도 런던이랑 플레인에서 한번 경기를 치렀고 또 어떻게 보면 그때 벌써 이겼기 때문에 오늘 프로 첫 경기 들어오면서 아 런던 한번 이겼으니까 좀 쉬울 거라고 좀 예상을 하셨나요? 아 물론이죠. <laughs> Of course. Why? Yes, of course. I like the confidence. And then you guys, fantastic. You guys are fantastic. Um, I also do want to ask about, you know, in the match, I think we saw something interesting. London was sort of chatting, sort of trying to throw you guys off by, you know, typing in, uh, in the in-game chat. How did that make you feel? 자, 두 번째 질문으로는 이제 경기에서 오늘 런던이 계속 채팅창에다가 계속 이렇게 찌르더라고요. 계속 이렇게 뭘 치고 해서 이거에 대해서 좀 어떠, 좀 어떠셨는지. 좀 이게 좀, 아, 좀, 좀 이렇게 이게 좀 스트레스를 좀 받으셨나요? 그걸 그런 걸좀 보고 아, 딱히 신경은 안 썼는데 그냥 말 엄청 많네 이 정도 생각. <웃음> yeah. Didn't really bother me, but I did think, you know, oh my god, they do talk a lot. <웃음> Alright, that's it for the interview. Everybody, give it up for Bird Ring one more time. Thank you so much. Let's head back to the desk. Thank you so much, Danny. And of course, thank you so much, Bird Ring. Congratulations to the Boston Uprising. I mean, all chat has worked out for them before, but not with not with that squad. They have just too much veterans it's on. Boston. It doesn't get into their heads. Not like that. Not like that. Man, another dominant performance by the Boston Uprising. I'm not saying we knew that that's going to happen. Hey, I'll, just say, I'll just say right, Toronto. You know? You know, it's fine. It's okay. You know, holding you don't have a grudge. to apologize. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> they apologized in spirit okay? when they started cheering for Boston. Follow my at the lead. End, I think. Don't worry about it. Follow <laughs> my lead. Don't worry about it. Oh, well, let's uh, recap this match, see how they got it done, um, explain why Reinforce was so right and it was absolutely unnecessary to boo. And Jake. And Jake. And, and me. I'm not a, uh, yeah, you we were all right. Let's congratulate. I'm not letting go of my. I got to wait for Danny to really gloat. Boston Uprising, they showed that they are not struggling against that Reinhardt comp already in the planes. Like, not even remotely. Where other teams still were trying to figure it out, Boston had an answer, and it worked again. Like, they were not faced. I, I think what's so scary for the London Spitfire is that 
this was a match of building dominance for Boston, right? The first map, London was able to take it. They were able to get the win on arguably the best map in the game for the Rhine Comp on Lijang Tower. But Boston, they're unfazed, and there was three dominant maps in a row from there. So really, I, I feel that this really hurts London. However, I don't think many teams can replicate Boston's success. I think it comes on the back of insane individual mechanics from Smurf, Bernard Decay, really every, even Lee J. Khan, you know, his, his already his existing tendency of wanting to go to your back line and, and make solo plays works perfectly against the London Spitfire. So I think it's gonna be hard for other teams to necessarily do the same. Even Atlanta going up against London, I think they have to take them seriously as an opponent. They're a unique team that can still get these wins if you give them any opportunity. I mean, you can see as well Boston Uprising, how they're combining these ultimates. They have such a good understanding of their composition, what they do is better than the Reiner composition, the way they combine Terra Surge with the Dragon Blade, for example, the way Artillery Strike is already ready to go when the Terra Surge come in. Boston Uprising, they just have a great understanding of this composition, and the case Dragon Blades, they were just like, oh, hamstring the Lono Spitfire. They just couldn't get any initiative done. How they struggled to land any meaningful shatters because Boston Uprising's rotations were on point. They had a good understanding of what the Lono Spitfire were trying to do. This is just a really smart team of veterans who have been in this situation before. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely don't give up the, the the front foot aggression to London. London is a team that is able to just bully down a lot of other squads, making those TP rotations, punishing people who are who are sitting there passively. But Boston, they're rarely caught in that spot. They're the ones initiating. They're forcing skills out. And so London, they don't have all the tools in their arsenal that they'd like to that they'd like to typically play with. Those TP around, speed boost, drone. It's like you're always paying some of those key abilities just to get around the map against Boston. Yeah, I mean, Boston uh, taking the W here, but still, as you already said when recapping this, not too many teams will be able to replicate what Boston Uprising has done. And again, that is something we saw in the planes. Other teams still struggled against the Rancor for good reason, Jake, because there's a lot of intricate details to the way London Spitfire are playing this comp, which makes it work so well against other teams. I wanted to dive in a little bit deeper on this story because I think the, the fan response to London's comp has been undeniable. People love that they're making the Reinhardt work. And so I wanted to go in a little bit deeper and talk about how they get it done, what enables them to make it work. So I'm gonna illustrate this little piece right here. This is London's attack on King's Road. Remember, they're on attack because it's gonna get confusing. So London, we can roll the clip first. They're just gonna walk in and immediately TP across to the high ground. Even Hadi, he's in the perfect position to TP his team. And they're gonna be able to stabilize in this position, get all of their cooldowns back. Every single player on this squad, they can all reset on the high ground because Arissa can't get to you. Bastion's on the low ground. These heroes can't get to you. They're forced to just be patient and wait. London is gonna be able to rotate out here to this position and create such a dominant position on the high ground to, to zone off the point. And then they're gonna be able to pressure. So we can roll the clip from here and see where they go. So they're gonna move on to this high ground and taking this poking position, all of Boston, I mean, Boston's on defense and they're pushed into the attacker spawn right now. London takes the initiative, drops straight to the point and they're already, there's one tick down. They're even pressuring a second as soon as the cooldowns come out from the Boston Uprising. So just creating a huge advantage out of essentially nothing based on their Reinkopf and their Symmetra TPs. But even when they get into this potentially dicey scenario, they feel, you know, maybe Boston has their cooldowns back and is about to push. They go right back to the high ground. We can pause it again because they're gonna do the same rotation again come out to this high ground position and it's gonna force Boston to make a decision, right? Can you go back again? You know, you don't really have time for that on Boston. Do you wanna cross point here? Again, this is a threatening position because London can pop this amplification matrix. And so Boston, they take the last option left and they kind of run across into this corner. It's, it ends up working for Boston a little bit, but they, London puts so much pressure on them. We can roll the clip. You see that Izayaki only lives by the skin of his teeth. Look at him caught on this rotation. I, I cannot believe he gets out of this. But still, London are two ticks up. They pressured out more ultimates, and ultimately they're gonna create an advantage out of this, forcing Decay to flank, uh, eventually getting that pick, and then the beat from Boston isn't gonna get any value. So London, they're just masters of, of backing out of these questionable situations and always refighting with an advantage, creating something out of nothing by rotating around the map and, and forcing their enemies to be reactive rather than proactive. I think it's really fascinating how Lono Spitfire are able to navigate the map like that because again, like no one really does it like that and like utilizing the Symmetra Teleporter, a hero that is now really viable, this has been a unique approach from the Lono Spitfire. So all is really fun to watch, but I just feel like Boston had their number in this matchup. People like London because they like 
good, honest Overwatch. <laughs> honest Overwatch. Honest Overwatch the is a real meta comp. Ryan. Those Ryan comps. That's it, <laughs> it depends on who you're asking. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's <laughs> not wrong, right? I'm not Ryan Art. Well, let's, let's see. They're not out yet. They have to fight their way back in through the lower bracket. They do have a scary opponent oh, waiting for them down there. Oh, oh. Atlanta Rain is just not the team you want to find yourself facing off against in the lower bracket. Uprising Spark is going to be an explosive match up there. So I can't wait to see what bracket one will have in store for us. But first things first. You know what I love more than brackets? Bundles. Okay, bundles. There we go. Right, DP bundles. That was close. DPS bundles. Right. <laughs> you are a close second, Danny. A close Thank you. second, for sure. Make sure to grab yours. And now, Team Weapon Charms are coming with it. So uh, make sure to pick up all of those snazzy team skins. They are looking good. Now, I am more than just hyped for the next match. It's going to be the last match of the day. And it's two teams who've been fighting it so close all season long. Of course, I'm talking about the Houston Outlaws and the Florida mayhem and we will be breaking down that action after a short break so stick around the time has come to crown our next overwatch league champion are you guys ready let me hear you let's recall our epic journey through season six welcome back that was good to be back Begin. Welcome to Spring Stage Knockout. The Soul Infernal. The Hangzhou Spark sweep their way into mid-season madness. And that'll be it! Lost and Uprising will be seeing you in the mid-season madness. The Florida Mayhem have booked their ticket to Seoul. Let it go, Johnny. Let it go, Johnny. The stadium's out. Ultimate challengers, the Houston Outlaws, the Atlanta Rain. This is real deal. It's not an anime. The Atlanta Rain ride it all the way to the throne. Your mid-season madness victors. A successful defense here in front of point B. Hong Joe Spark win. Seoul Dynasty punched the ticket. A collect call from Canada and Dallas Fuel. The Boston Uprising. London Spitfire. They're going to accept the charges. Overwatch League Grand Finals. The moment you have been waiting for. Grand Finals. September 28th to October 1st.